Hey folks, uh, Dr. White here, and I'm going to take you through some simple stoichiometry problems. Uh, now, these stoichiometry problems all have the same steps that you need to go through to solve them, and uh, we'll go through the steps as we go through this worksheet. Um, so, generally, for stoichiometry problems, um, you're going to get a word equation. Okay, so if you look at word equation number one, okay. Um, talks about hydrogen sulfide gas, which smells like rotten eggs, incidentally, burns in air to produce sulfur dioxide and water. How many moles of oxygen gas would be needed to complete uh, to completely burn eight moles of hydrogen sulfide? Okay, so the first step is to turn the word equation into a chemical equation. And for this first one, we've got it written down here. Okay. Second step is to actually balance the chemical equation to make sure you've got the same number of atoms of each atom on the on the left and the right. So let's do that real quick. 1s, 1s, awesome. 2h2s, or I'm sorry, 2h's, 2h's over on the right, no problem. But the only problem is that we've got two oxygens over here and three oxygens over here. So we're going to have to deal with that. We're going to have to turn it into an even number. So I'm going to put a 2 here, okay? That's going to even out our oxygens. Um, now let's go to, um, well we've got four oxygens now so let's put a two here. And now we've got four H's, we're gonna have to put a two here. And then um, now we've got two S's so we're gonna have to put a two here. That changes the number of oxygens on the right hand side so in the end, let's get rid of this two and put a three down, we are balanced. Okay. Second step is to actually fill in what I like to call the BCA table. Okay, and the BCA table just helps you keep track of um, the numbers of products and reactants before, during, and after the reaction. So let's look what uh, let's see what they give us in the uh, word problem. Remember, the numbers that you put into the BCA table are not the same numbers as your balanced equation. Okay, never ever put the same numbers in as your balanced equation. Okay, so let's look at the problem again. How many moles of oxygen gas would be needed to completely burn eight moles of hydrogen sulfide? Okay, so this is my hydrogen sulfide. I'm starting out with eight moles and I'm trying to find how many moles of oxygen gas. That's my X. Okay, now, before the reaction occurs, we don't have any product, so we can put a zero here and a zero here, okay? Now, if it completely burns eight moles, that means I'm gonna get rid of eight moles at the end. At the end of the reaction, I'm gonna have zero uh, moles of H2S, okay? Um, now, we're trying to think about the amount of oxygen, okay? So, if we know that three moles of oxygen reacts with two moles of hydrogen sulfide, how many moles of oxygen would be needed for eight moles of hydrogen sulfide? Okay, and the way we set that up is like this. If two moles of H2S, if this is my ratio, Then if I had eight moles of H2S, how many moles of oxygen would I have? So you'd have to solve that equation. If you do that, X is gonna equal 12. I'm gonna need eight moles of, I'm sorry, 12 moles of oxygen to react with eight of H2S. So this should be a 12. If it completely burns, I'm gonna get rid of 12. I'm going to have a zero over here. Now, just for fun, let's finish off the BCA table. Okay, now, how many moles of SO2 am I going to make? Well, the ratio is two moles per two moles of H2S. That's two to two, or you could say that is one to one. So if I, if I, get, if I react eight moles of H2S, I'm going to make eight moles of SO2. And I have two moles of water as well, so it's it's a one it's a one to one to one ratio. So that means if I if I'm if I'm going to 
make two eight moles of SO2, then I'm going to make eight moles of H2O. And then here on the after part, you just add up the before and the change. So we have solved number one. We figured out how many moles of oxygen we'd need. We would need 12 moles. Okay, let's move on to number two here. Okay, now number two, let's read through it. Propane, C3H8, burns in air to form carbon dioxide and water. If 12 moles of carbon dioxide are formed, how many moles of propane were burned? Well, first we need to make the balanced chemical equation. Always, always, always start from there. Okay, propane, C3H8, burns in air. Whenever you see burns in air, that generally means you're reacting it with oxygen. Oxygen is the most reactive substance in air. And we're going to make CO2 and water. Now, before you can do anything else with this problem, you've got to balance it. And typically, combustion reactions are, are the, the most difficult ones to balance. But they're not very uh, hard if you, if you go through and do it systematically. Three carbons. One carbon. I need to put a three here. Okay? Don't do oxygen. Do oxygen last. Eight H's, two H's, I need to put a four here, okay? Now, I have 10 oxygens on the right-hand side. So what do I need to put here to get 10 oxygens on the left-hand side? What do you think? Five. Five's the correct answer. Now I've got my balanced chemical equation. Now let's go through and figure out before, before, during, and after what our moles looks, looks like. If 12 moles of carbon dioxide are formed, so we're talking about carbon dioxide here, so we're going to put a 12 here. How many moles of propane were burned? Okay, so this is our X. This is what we are looking for. Okay, now, actually, I put the 12 in the wrong place. That shouldn't be there. The 12 should be after the reaction has completed, so the 12 would be down here. If I'm going to make 12, how much C3H8? Well, I've got the ratio. I've got the molar ratio in my reaction. For every one propane molecule, I'm going to make three CO2 molecules. So let's set it up as a ratio problem. I'm going to do this over here. So for every one C3H8 I'm going to make three CO2s but I want to make 12 CO2 so how much C3H8 am I going to need? You guessed it, I'm going to need four moles of C3H8 so the answer would be four here, okay? Now, before the reaction, I've got zero and zero. What do you think? If I had four moles of C3H8, how many moles of oxygen would I need to react with four moles? Well, if you, you can do the same ratio, and you can actually figure it out. If I need five moles for every one mole, I'm going to need 20 moles of oxygen to react with four moles of C3H8. If it completely reacts, I'm going to get rid of the 4 here. I'm going to get rid of the 20 here, right, because we're not going to have anything left. I'm going to add, let's see, if I start with 4 moles, oh right, I'm going to start with, I'm going to make, make 12. What would this number be? How much water would I make if I make 12 moles of CO2. Well, if I start with four, and I know I'm going to make four times the amount of water as C3H8, then this should be, this number should be 16. Okay, so in the end, these are my ratios, but this is my correct answer. Okay, last one. Here's our word equation. Let's turn this into a chemical equation. Ammonia 
is made, all right? That means ammonia is produced by reacting hydrogen and nitrogen. So the tricky part to this question is hydrogen, hydrogen gas is always H2. Remember, it's a diatomic. It's one of our diatomics. Nitrogen as well. Nitrogen is a diatomic. We're going to make NH3 out of these. Let's go ahead and balance the equation. Two H's over here, three H's over here. Well, that's not going to work. The way you take care of balancing uh, an, odd, an, even, an odd and an even number is to make the odd number even. So let's put a two here. So two NH3s, that means I've got six H's over here. I'm going to have to put a three here, and then the two here, um, I'm fine. I am balanced. Let's read the rest of the question. How many moles of ammonia can be made from 0.15 moles of nitrogen gas? So if I start off with 0.15, and I want to know how many moles of ammonia. That's my x. Okay. Now, if I know my molar ratio, I can solve this problem. Remember, for every one nitrogen, molecule, I'm going to make two NH3s. So one, the, here's the ratio, one nitrogen is going to make two NH3s, and then I'm going to put in what I actually have here. If I start off with 0.15 nitrogens, how many NH3s am I going to make? That's my X, right? X should equal 0 0.30. So I'm going to make 0 0.30 moles. Well, let's go ahead and fill in the rest of this thing just so we can um, kind of see how it all plays out. Okay, 0.15 moles of nitrogen. How many moles of H2 would I need to fully react with that? Well, the ratio is 3 to 1, so this number should be, I'd need 0.45 moles of H2. The change, well, I'm not going to have any reactants left. So I'm going to get rid of all that. I'm going to get rid of all this. In the end, sorry, this should be after. In the end, I'm going to have zero of this. Oh, I'm sorry, I put that X in the wrong spot. This should be down here. This is what is made here. 0 0.30. Of course, we start off with 0 here. And if we end up with 0 0.30, then we're going to make 0 0.30 is the change. So these are your basic stoichiometry problems. I call them basic because they actually give us moles as our quantities. I'm going to go through some more complicated ones in the, in the next worksheet where they actually give us grams as the quantities, and we've got to work our stoichiometry with grams. Okay, thanks a lot.